three videos. Let's do this. Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video built on my last one on external stability. I suggest you check that one out if you haven't already. In that last video, I gave an overview of external stability. Here's a recap. External stability refers to the economic objective concerned with ensuring that our foreign obligations are sustainable and that they're not too volatile or risky. The topic of external stability comes up in topic three of the syllabus. In the syllabus, you can see that the indicators of external stability include the CAD, net foreign debt, net foreign liabilities, terms of trade, the exchange rate, and international competitiveness. For each of these topics, I'm gonna to give an overview of their trends as well as their causes and effects. I also gave some tips about how to write about external stability in exams. Again, make sure you watch that video. It would definitely also help you if you checked out my balance payments playlist for more detailed explanations. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how government policies can influence this economic objective. In particular, we're gonna focus on monetary policy. How do changes in the cash rate impact external stability? Let's focus on the impacts of an increase in the cash rate. An increase in Australia's cash rate and in turn an increase in interest rates will cause interest repayments from Australia to be higher, leading to more debits in our MPY and therefore current account. Furthermore, an increase in Australia's interest rates will attract more foreign investment inflows. This will increase Australia's net foreign liabilities as we owe more to foreign lenders and investors. And of course, this further causes more interest outflows and worsens our net primary income and current account deficit. So overall, tight monetary policy and higher cash rates will lead to worsened MPY and CAD, while lower cash rates will lead to improvements. You could see this during the loose monetary policy of the COVID-19 pandemic, when cash rates were lowered to 0.10% and the MPY account saw significant improvement. Net capital inflows and net foreign liabilities were also greatly reduced in this period. Then after the pandemic, to tackle inflation, the RBA used tight monetary policy. The increased cash rates contributed to this enlarged deficit. Another aspect of external stability that could be impacted by changes in the cash rate is the exchange rate and subsequently international competitiveness. Following from the above points, as increased cash rates attract foreign investments, these inflows would cause increased demand for the AUD, causing an appreciation. This could have contributed to this rising TWI, which correlates with a period of tight monetary policy. Hey, a quick exam tip. If you were to write an external response linking monetary policy to external stability, like this one from 2021's question 26, I would advise that you explore the link from cash rates to exchange rates, because some markers consider this an essential link to recognize. When you look at the RBA's objectives, one of them is price stability. This was formerly currency stability, and some textbooks and markers interpret this to say that monetary policy has a focus on managing the exchange rate. Even though this may be outdated and stats don't always support it, be safe. Make at least a theoretical link from cash rates to the exchange rate and provide stats to support this correlation where possible, like I did with the TWI. Following from exchange rates, monetary policy can consequently impact international competitiveness, the trade balance, and subsequently, the current account deficit. As an increase in the cash rate attracts foreign investment and causes an appreciation of the dollar, this will cause Australia to lose international competitiveness. Exports will become less attractive to foreigners and imports will become more attractive to Australians. This then worsens bogs and again worsens the current account balance. So you see, monetary policy can impact various aspects of external stability. You may have noticed I haven't mentioned terms of trade. Would you lose marks if you talked about all of the above points but missed out on terms of trade? Like I said in my last video, no. You're not expected to talk about all six syllabus dot points equally. You're usually better off focusing on fewer aspects and going into detail with each one. Now, before we wrap up this video on monetary policy, I also want to remind you to revise the limitations. This will be particularly important if the question is evaluate, assess, or to what extent. For example, time lags, global influences, conflicting objectives, are ways that monetary policy will be limited in being able to achieve external stability. If you'd like more detail, make sure you check out my video on limitations of monetary policy. So hopefully this makes it easier for you to link external stability to monetary policy. If you'd like more advice, contact me for tutoring. Also, consider getting the workbook that accompanies my videos if you wanna practice your writing skills. 100% of the proceeds go to charity. Get it from my website. In the next video, I'm gonna continue this series by talking about fiscal policy linking the federal budget to external stability. 
Make sure you subscribe to the channel and my socials to make sure you don't miss out on the next video. You can also leave a like and comment as well as share this video if it's helped you. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.